In this uh, section, we're going to talk about two particular ways to determine if series converges or diverges, and one's going to be the integral test, and the other one is the p-series. So, given a series, there's basically two things we want to know. Does the series converge or diverge? And if it converges, what is the, the sum? Well, in this section, we're going to study series that do not have any negative terms. And the reason for this is that that way the partial sums of these series will form non-decreasing sequences, and non-decreasing -de sequences that are bounded from above always converge. So to show that a series of non-negative terms converge, we need only to show that its partial sums are bounded from above. And at first it may seem to be a drawback because this approach establishes the convergence, but it doesn't actually give us the sum of the series in question. Now, it might be better to have the sums, but in most cases, it, you know, it, it can't be done. And so, since we don't have the sums, we just determine, first we must first establish whether they're convergent, and then we can try to approximate the sum if possible. Okay, so it says suppose that this says suppose that the series a sub n is an infinite series where a is greater than or equal to zero for all n. Then each partial sum is greater than or equal to its predecessor because the uh, partial sum s of n plus one is equal to s of n plus a, where a is the sum of the previous terms. Okay, and since the partial sums form a non-decreasing sequence, the non-decreasing sequence theorem tells us that the series will converge if and only if the partial sums are bounded from above. So that gives us this theorem here. A series of non-negative terms converges if and only if its partial sums are bounded from above. So now we're going to return to uh, the harmonic series, uh, 1 over n. The harmonic series is divergent, but this is divergent, but this doesn't follow from the nth term test. The nth term 1 over n does go to 0. So if you remember, I showed you earlier that when I applied the nth term test, the limit of the nth term as n goes to infinity is 0, and I warned you not to assume that that means it converges. That just means we didn't know whether it converged or diverged. Okay, but the reason that this diverges is because there is no upper bound for the partial sums. So if you were to group these terms, um, you know, and I, I told you this earlier, the sum of the first two terms is one and a half. The sum of the next two terms are greater than uh, are greater than that and the sum of the next four terms are greater than a half. So, so the sum of the next eight terms are greater than a half, and so on. So in general, the sum of the two n terms ending with 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 is greater than a half. So therefore, the sequence of the partial sums is not bounded from above. So if n equals 2 to the k power, the partial sum s of k is greater than k over 2. So therefore, the harmonic series diverges simply because it does not have that upper bound that we were talking about. Okay, here's another theorem. If the series of a, a sub n is a positive term series, and if there exists some number m such that the, the series of s n, or the nth term of the sum, sorry, the nth partial sum is less than m for every n, then the series converges and has a sum that's less than or equal to m. If no such m exists, then the series diverges. Well, this leads to the integral test. So if you didn't quite understand that, don't worry about it. But the, more, the important part is the integral test. Uh, if a function is positive valued, continuous, and decreasing for x is greater than or equal to 1, then the infinite series f of 1 plus f of 2 and so forth, that's just your series, it converges if the corresponding function converges 
as x goes from 1 to infinity and diverges if the corresponding function diverges as x goes from 1 to infinity. Okay, so now I'm not going to calculate the integrals. I'll leave that to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you the logic here. Okay, so here's that harmonic series again. Okay, all right. So the function that would correspond to this would be the function 1 over x. We have 1 over n, so the function would be 1 over x. Okay, now this function is actually a decreasing function for all values greater than or equal to 1. All right, now if you were to evaluate this integral, you would actually find that it diverges. Now it's going to be an improper integral, so you'll have to use the limits. But this integral actually diverges. So I'll leave you to show that this integral diverges. Well, since the integral diverges, then from the integral test, the corresponding series must also diverge. Okay, what about this one? The series 1 over n squared. Well, the corresponding function would be 1 over x squared. And that's going to be a decreasing function for values greater than or equal to 1. Now, to apply the integral test, we have to show that you have to determine whether this integral converges or diverges. And again, I'll let you show that. Um, just apply the power rule there and find the limit. And you'll find that this integral actually does converge to a value. Therefore, the corresponding series must converge to a, va to a value. Now, what about this one? N e to the negative n squared. Well, the corresponding function for that would be x e to the negative x squared. Okay? And this is a decreasing function for all values greater than or equal to 1. Now, if you take this integral and evaluate this integral from 1 to infinity, you will get a number, 1 over 2e. And so therefore that integral converges, therefore the series actually converges. Okay, so that's basically the integral test. So you got to make sure you've got the hypothesis of the integral test satisfied, and that just means that the function must be uh, continuous and decreasing for all x values greater than or equal to 1. So that's why I was checking on each of those to make sure the function was decreasing for x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, now note in the first example above, the series diverged and the power of n was 1. But in the second example, the series converged and the power of, and the power of n was less than 1. So, see here, the power of n is 1, and here the power of n is 2, okay? Okay, I just lied to you about the second example. I do that sometimes just to mess you up. But actually, in the second example, uh, the power is actually greater than 1, okay? And that's important. So, so in... 1 over n, the power equals 1, but in the second example, the power in the denominator is actually greater than 1. Okay, well, that's actually, those are actually problems that can be solved with what's called the p-test. So if you have a series of 1 over n to the p, then that series actually converges if p is greater than 1, and that series diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. So if we had had that theorem, if we had had this theorem earlier, then I could have just looked at this, looked at this series and said, okay, n has a power of 1, so I have 1 over n to the first power, and since the power is 1, I know this diverges, and for 1 over n squared, I know the power is 2, which is uh, greater than 1, and therefore, I know that this must converge, 
and both of those are by the P test. Okay, so the P or called the P series test. Okay, so now let's determine if each P series converges or diverges. All right, I've already answered this one. It diverges because P is equal to 1, and if P is less than or equal to 1, it diverges. Okay, now here I have 1 over n to the 2 thirds. Well, that series diverges because 2 thirds is less than 1. And then on this one, I have 1 over n to the 5 thirds. Well, 5 thirds is greater than 1, so that series actually converges because P would be greater than 1. And now on this one, um, I probably should have wrote this so you could see it, but but this series, look at the series 1 over square root of n cubed. That would be 1 over n to the 3 halves power. Okay? So since this is 1 over n to a power, we know that 3 halves is greater than 1. So therefore, this series must converge. And if this series converges, then of course 5 times that series is going to converge. Okay, now go ahead and I didn't give you the answers here, so you might have to Google the answers, but um, go ahead and use the integral test to show, oh yes I did, I'm sorry, I said it diverges. Go ahead, use the integral test to show that this series diverges with the integral test, and then use the P test or P series test to show that this series actually converges okay and that's pretty much it for uh, this this section on the integral test and the p-series test now in the next section we're going to do some tests that are called comparison tests so we'll see these comparison tests but so now but before we move on make sure you put the the integral test and the p-series test in your pocket and hang on to it